Welcome to the Urban Advantage Podcast, the official voice of the University of North Texas at Dallas. Here are your hosts, Benjamin Bullock and Greg Campbell. Take it away, guys. Hello, world, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 5 of the Urban Advantage Podcast, presented by the University of North Texas at Dallas. I'm Benjamin Bullock, the Senior Marketing and Communications Coordinator for UNT Dallas. And joining me as co-host is the owner and CEO of Rainmaker Incorporated, Greg the Man Campbell. What up, Greg? Hello, Benjamin. How you be? I'm good, man. I can't complain. It's raining again and it's Halloween. So, well, you know, you know <laughs> it, it's tough around here. It's the amount of rain that we've had in the last couple, last couple of weeks has made it a little dreary. And I can see how people are getting a little turned off by all of this rain. We get a few days of, you know, in between, we get a little sunshine just to mm -hmm. turn the dial back a little bit. But this rain has been challenging. Yes, it has. I mean, you know what? I went back home, back east uh, to visit my parents and also for my school's homecoming, Delaware State University. Where? Yeah. where, where what's that? Delaware, Delaware State, State, man. HBCU, man. Located okay, to me at conference, man. You know what I mean? So it was good. Um, you know, um, me and my fraternity brothers were making stuff for our fraternity Is that where you played? I played what? Intramural? Yeah, that's what I played. <laughs> <laughs> Intramural, not necessarily uh, college football, but uh, yeah, but no, it was a great exp great time going back to my alma mater, man, seeing a lot of my old professors, uh, old classmates, and like I said, a lot of my fraternity brothers, man, I set up, celebrated 10 years in the fraternity uh, with the rest of my nine other line brothers, man, so it was awesome, great, and I got to spend time with my parents as well. While you were out having fun this weekend, I was <laughs> uh, working you know, the communities, uh, both here in Dallas and in Houston, to get out the vote. Mm -hmm. And we're expecting to really have a really strong turnout for November 6th vote. Yes. It's very important. As I've said on this podcast time and time again, there is no reason that to protest if you're not participating. Mm -hmm. So you have to get out there and really vote your interests. It is very significant. This may be one of the most important elections in our time. What's at stake is who represents us, our agenda, and moving it forward. It is very, very significant that if you haven't voted, you get out there and vote. Absolutely. And UNT Dallas, like I said before in previous episodes, has done a great job of pushing that initiative. I know coming up tomorrow, or I mean, sorry, later this week, that UNT Dallas is actually providing free bus rides for people to go get out there and vote. So UNT Dallas is doing an excellent job, and also everybody within the community as well. That's really important. You know, one of the other things I got a chance to participate in yesterday is called a, a the Donors of Color program. Mm -hmm. It was put on by the Communities Foundation. Did you know that there are hundreds of major donors of color around the United States who participated in this study and talked mm -hmm. about the fact that they are giving more than a million dollars a year mm -hmm. in donations? And they're scattered all over the United States. And one of the biggest locations for these donors is Dallas, Texas. North Texas is the home of many of these donors. And they talked about what their interests were, how they were giving, how they wanted to build an ecosystem of other donors so that they could work collectively in the general interests of the community to support issues that are important to them. Fabulous study. I congratulate the Communities Foundation for taking this on and to expose the regular public about the donors of color and to start linking these donors together so that they can make a major impact in our communities. Greg, you're well connected in the city, man. So how have you been able to get like that in terms of just knowing these people since you've been here since the 80s? You know, but so that means you came across a lot of good people. Well, I've had the benefit of um, growing the various businesses I've been involved in through volunteer activity. I've sat on a number of different boards. I have been, remained politically active. You know, back in the day when we did the Dallas plan, I was one of the, the three uh, consultants uh, writing the original Dallas plan. And I had an office in City Hall. Mm -hmm. I've been a treasurer for a number of city council candidates. I have been a major contributor to a number of political uh, candidates uh, in and around uh, North Texas and nationally. And I have tried to stay you know, true to the values and the issues that I care about. And I have a great degree of concern about education, health, and the Southern sector. So those three issues are top of mind for me. And where those issues are, that's where you'll find me. That's why you're the man. I need to get like you more often, seriously. I mean, I'm only 30, but you know, I'm trying to get like you and just kind of take after you in that aspect. You made it all the way to 30? Yeah, man, sure. Okay, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just measuring. I'm just measuring. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so in terms of what's going on with UNT Dallas, um, you know, UNT Dallas hosted the Major Madness event 
on Tuesday, which was an opportunity for students who are still undecided about a major to get more information. So big ups to the UNTD um, Career Services Department uh, under the direction of Arthur Lums and his team. They do a phenomenal job. Uh, President Mung actually has a town hall meeting coming up on election day, which is next Tuesday, uh, November the 6th at the UNT Dallas Law School. So make sure you guys can get out there, come on downtown and be here at noon. You know, I have to say a big up to uh, President Mung. He is present wherever the major issues are. Mm -hmm. If it's about voting, he's there. If it's about education, he's there. If it's a, a, about health care in our community, he's there. Big ups to President Mung. Absolutely. Well, for our first time listeners, the purpose of this podcast is to identify and keep you updated on what's happening in Southern Dallas and at UNC Dallas. Ranging from education to economic development to community relations to entertainment, we ha will have it all covered for you right here. Be sure to follow the podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Urban ADV Podcast and by using the hashtag Urban ADV Podcast. Greg, what's your social media handle? We, know we still need to get your followers and your likes up, man. I am Greg Campbell. Real simple. I keep on telling you that. You don't have to be, you know, creative. I am Greg Campbell. <laughs> Greg, what's mine, man? You know, just just, just jive. <laughs> you no, know, I just come back to Ben Jive. <laughs> ben Ben Jive? Yeah. Well, Ben Bull Jive is my real social media name. So make sure you guys get out there and follow us, man. So, and also be sure to, to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Well, coming up next, we'll welcome the illustrious pastor of the Concord Church and Dallas community leader, Brian Carter, to the show. Stay tuned as Pastor Carter touches on how his church has greatly impacted the Southern Dallas community for so many years. Don't touch that dial. Perched on a hilltop overlooking the downtown Dallas skyline, the University of North Texas at Dallas is the only public four-year university in the city of Dallas. Serving the number one job market in America, UNT Dallas is ranked number one in Texas and number six nationally as the most affordable university. We as Trailblazers believe that every student should have the opportunity to earn a college degree regardless of their economic background, and we deliver. For more information, visit untdallas.edu. Blaze your trail. Welcome back to the Urban Advantage Podcast, the official voice of the University of North Texas at Dallas. Here are your hosts, Benjamin Bullock and Greg Campbell. Take it away, guys. Welcome back, everyone. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Urban ADV Podcast and subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Today, we're excited to have the pastor of the Great Concord Church and Dallas community leader, Brian Carter, as our special guest. Welcome to the show, Pastor Carter. Thank you. For those who are not familiar with you, your church, give us background on yourself and also on Concord. Thanks again for having me today. I'm excited to be a part of this uh, podcast. I, uh, Our church, Concord, has been here the last uh, 40 years, 44 years. Uh, we're a church that believes in growing people. And so our church, our mission is people growing people by connecting them to their next step with Christ. It's all about helping people take that next step wherever you may be in life. I've had the privilege of pastoring there the last 15 years. Mm. I've been in Dallas about 20 years. Uh, and you had some big shoes to follow. I did. I did. <laughs> Following the founder of any organization can be incredibly challenging. Pastor E.K. Bailey was there for almost 30 years, and I had the joy of uh, serving with him and then following him as a successor. Now, Pastor Carter, uh, you said you've been here for about 20 years and just kind of diving into your background a little bit. You and your wife moved here from OKC in 98. You both came here as teachers, though. Right. So right. how was that? Yeah. So and I wanted to be a pastor as a teenager. I knew that one day that's what I wanted to do. I dreamed of having a church with a community center, a school, a uh, ministry. And yet every pastor I knew was bivocational. So I planned to be a teacher, principal, pastor all together in the same space. So I went to Oklahoma State. Wife went to the University of Oklahoma. We got married in May. Uh, Oklahoma is that state, you know, sort of north of yes, Texas. Yes, that's, that's the that's one. That's that other one? Yeah, that's the other one. Okay. <laughs> you pledged a certain fraternity, right? I pledged the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, um, and so after leaving college, we got married, moved to Texas, and uh, started teaching school. I, I, I taught middle school math and science uh, for a couple of years. Really enjoyed it. I always had a passion for young boys of color, and uh, that meant a lot to me. And then after that, had a chance to join full-time ministry 
served there for a couple of years before entering a succession plan, and that was almost 15 years ago. Now, what are some of the things that Concord is doing to impact the southern sector of Dallas? Because you guys are located right off Camp Wisdom. Right, right. So we have basically five core areas that we try to get engaged in in the community. There's so many needs, but we've identified five. One is boys of color. So we host a, a boys conference. We try to encourage our men to do mentoring. We, we adopt schools. That's important to us. Education is another one. So adopting schools, trying to help young men and young women to be successful in the educational space. We give out about $100,000 each year in scholarships to help them further their education. Uh, political engagement is another space. We have about 15 elected or appointed officials in our church because we believe that your civic duty sometimes have to call you to get engaged. So we are very big in that. Racial reconciliation. Uh, we we started this gathering of white and black pastors uh, about four years ago uh, where we gather around talking about how can we serve the city together. And out of that, we ended up having 20 churches do pulpit swaps and share in ministry together and connect. And then the last two areas are economic development. Uh, we do some workforce development training. We also try to work with the Grow South uh, efforts to find and help uh, help the city find out our needs. And then lastly, criminal justice. Uh, in terms of prison ministry, in terms of working for criminal justice reform, those are our five. The only one we left off that we're looking at is health because we believe health is so crucial. Absolutely. But we try to strategize and get people involved around those areas because they're so important to the Southern sector. That's real great. Uh, you recently preached a sermon, Why We Should Vote. Can you summarize that message and tell us where you and the congregation went after the noon service? So we, we believe it's so important for people of faith to understand their civic responsibilities, that your faith doesn't end with a service, but it, it ends with your engagement in the city, in your community. And so when the whole message was about challenging people to understand what the scriptures say about civic engagement, about voting, and the role we play in that process. So we tried to encourage them and challenge about half of our congregation had already early voted. And the other half, we said, hey, meet us at the polls. Mm -hmm. And we all met at the Oak Cliff Sub Courthouse and voted because uh, we believe it's so important to what God has called us to do. Historically, what role does the black church play in community engagement? You know, historically, the black church has been at the center uh, for so long. When you consider the civil rights movement, uh, when you consider even those days of Jim Crow, it was that church that provided a safe place. Often the pastor was the voice of the community because he was the only one that was paid by the people. So they did, he didn't have the, the threat of losing his job in order to be that voice. And so I believe that black church is crucial to helping to advocate for issues and inform the community and really be a, a listening board to help the community know, help the community needs to get to those people of power. I'm, go ahead, Rick. So how have um, you converted this role of at being at the church, but also being a really strong member of the community itself? So it's, it's, it seems like you have mastered the role of being a pastor and looking after the spiritual growth of your congregation, but also playing a major role in the community. I don't know about master. That's, that's <laughs> a strong word. I, I, I'm trying every single day. You know, I, I spent probably the first 10 years of ministry trying to care for our church, trying to understand our church, trying to love our congregation well. And then as God gave us grace and building a great team there, begin to try to stretch out more into the community uh, because they go together. I think the church has to be engaged and, and by God's grace, he's opened some doors and some of our members are very involved. And so balancing a uh, family, a young family and the church and community engagement is tough at times, but I really feel a calling that God has called me to do this. So tell me a little bit about this one particular element that you're involved in. It's called Impact Dallas Capital. Sure. So in, go, ahead. go ahead. Tell us about that. So Impact Dallas Capital is, a, is basically the Grow South Fund. Uh, when when the mayor launched the initiative to uh, do economic development in the southern sector, he also wanted to raise private funds to be able to stimulate growth. One of the challenges with economic development is that if you do work in southern Dallas, you, you won't get the full 100 percent to do the project. You may get 60 to 70 percent. This fund is meant to assist with that, to provide some funding for those projects that are happening in the southern sector. 
Now, you're taking a, a leadership role in that process. It's not just you're on the sideline chairing. You're actually in the middle of this. You know, I just believe in advocating for what we need. I just believe that the Southern sector, so many times we get overlooked. Um, so many times we, we we're, our needs are not addressed. And my hope by serving in that space is to really advocate for what we need. The quality food services, job opportunities, uh, housing. Uh, it just needs that we have, but I think we have to continue to make those in power aware of those needs. Now, Pastor Carter, you know, you shine, you shine so, so brightly as a community leader, a pastor, you know, seeing Concord grow. Just a quick background on myself. I moved here from Louisiana back in January and your church was the first one I oh, actually visited. And um, I was just you blown signed up. up as a member. You remember? <laughs> I know the pastor's going to ask you that in a second. I know I'm not going to just ask you that. Nah. I know he is. I'm just you waiting know. on my wife. That's all I'm waiting on. That's all I think. No, but seriously, so like. You tired? I'm just <laughs> asking. I'm just, oh, I got to drop that 10%. <laughs> Okay. I got to reap what I sow now. Ain't that I, right, Pastor Carter? That. <laughs> so when can I we been, see your statement? You want to see it? <laughs> you want to see it? I want to see your I'm statement. I'm going to email it to you. I think right, it's okay. Good, good. Okay, cool. So when I visited the church, man, I was just so blown away just by, number one, just the uh, the friendliness of everybody. As soon as you walk through the door, greeters, boom, that's right there. Great. You know, you, then you have the section that's blocked off just for visitors. That's awesome. And then me being a son of a pastor, you know, that's, that's specific things I actually look for. So number one, I just want to congratulate you on just an amazing job. That you got that you guys do, but secondly, you know, how are you able to balance being a pastor and, and community community leader, but also a father and a husband, and just trying to do so many different things within the city? You know, um, I think I'm always reassessing my priorities. You know, I, I have a life plan I try to shape every year. It tries to help me my time with God, date night with my wife, try to look at my kids' schedules. Uh, I have a game to go for my my daughter tomorrow. Uh, and so you just you're just trying to put in the big things first and then you build the other things around it. And then I think taking time annually to say, OK, what do I need to commit to? What do I need to remove? You know, just constantly trying to trying to keep put some checkpoints in place so you don't overdo it. Uh, but it's a joy. You know, you, you only, your life is meant to be given away. And so it's important for us to find a way to do that. So what do you do for fun, Pastor Carter? For fun, I like golf. I like working out. I love to read. I like Netflix. <laughs> I, I, you give me a few a little time. When, when I get some downtime, <laughs> those are the things I enjoy to do. You know, and I like sports. I love I sports. Sport. Pastor Carter, you know, Concord has had such a major impact in the Southern sector. And now we have UNT Dallas That's here. Right. What kind of role has the university played in the Southern sector from your perspective? You know, UNT Dallas has, has really been a great community partner. Uh, Dr. Monk has been great in terms of just providing insight and partnership. We have a counseling center because one of our special interests is mental health. And so uh, the um, your counseling department provides students mm -hmm. regularly every semester to help with interns and to help do counseling. So it's been a great partnership. And then the director of one of your departments also serves on the board of that community agency. And so whether it's that or whether it's we did our back to school initiative and instead of us having it at the church, we held it at the university. It's just been a great partnership. We need space. We need room. We need ideas. We need thoughts. You guys have been right there. So we're grateful for the partnership. As a major proponent of the Southern sector, give me your vision. What's your vision for this community in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? You know, I think our hope is that Southern Dallas will be a place where we really is, is as vibrant as any other part of the city. Vibrant educationally, vibrant economically, vibrant spiritually, uh, that there is a real future for both the families and the young adults and the students. I think at times we, we, we're so underserved and my vision would be, I would love for us to have some of those services provided, but also a greater plan for where those things will end up in the future. You right. personally, what's on the horizon for you? Like, do you have any more books on the, on the, on the upcoming or what? what you got? Yeah, I would love, to, I'm, I'm work, working on a couple of books. And I, I would love to have some things published, you know, some things on relationships and families. That's one of my kind of passionate areas. Um, I'd love to kind of just continue to, to serve in the in the ministry. And then we're, we want to do, we want to really raise up young leaders in the city. I would love to see just a whole generation of young leaders engaged across the space of the leadership, helping to bring those changes to reality. Now, Pascal, I'm talking about your wife. I know she's very involved with the church. Now, some first ladies kind of take the step back, but your, your wife is the total opposite. She's on the forefront. She is. She's a fun person. She <laughs> loves investing in women and she loves education. So she finds great joy 
and just leading the women of our church. She has like 90, 100 Bible studies. She just loves, she's just a fun person. I'm a quiet, shy guy. She's the life of the party. Right. They right. say this is a smart man. But he, he uplifted his wife. The other comment you heard him say, date night and building everything yeah, was yeah, around yeah, yeah. date night. Strategic. Smart man. And, and I'm Strategic. on the air too. I'm trying. <laughs> Strategic, man. That's trying, great, man. That's great. Greg, you got anything to add before we let Pastor No, I, I'm just so happy that you made the decision to be in Dallas and to be in the Southern sector and to take the leadership role, to fill the large shoes that you, you <laughs> inherited and to provide your own twist on the leadership here for Concord and for Dallas. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's an honor to be invited. Thank you so very much. Now, Pastor Card, before we let you go, tell our listeners how they can follow you on social media and how they can get connected with the Concord Church. church. You can connect with me on Twitter at, uh, at Brian L. Carter or our church, Concord Dallas, across all the platforms. And your service times are? 8, 10, and 12. Man, I love that 12 o'clock. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> that 12 o'clock is clutch, man. 12 o'clock is good. Hey, man. That 12 o'clock is clutch, man. <laughs> Coming up. We'll close out the show by giving you tips on how to balance some of the challenges that life brings. You're listening to the Urban Advantage Podcast, the official voice of Southern Dallas and the University of North Texas at Dallas. Stay tuned, y'all. Attention UNT Dallas students. Does your resume need tweaking? Or are you in search of an internship? Better yet, are you looking to start a business? Well, our career services department is where you need to be. Under the direction of Arthur Lumsey Jr. and Whitney Crawford, this department provides career tips and guidance to get your professional journey on the right path. For more information, stop by room 246 in Founders Hall or send an email to careerservices at untdallas.edu. And remember everyone, blaze your trail. Welcome back to the Urban Advantage Podcast, the official voice of the University of North Texas at Dallas. Here are your hosts, Benjamin Bullock and Greg Campbell. Take it away, guys. Welcome back, everyone, for our last segment. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Urban ADV Podcast. That's Urban ADV Podcast. And join the conversation. Greg. Life brings a lot of challenges to the table, especially when you're a college student trying to balance a heavy class load and or working a job. What are some tips you can give our listeners who are struggling with life balance? Ben, I have 10 tips revolving around the concept of resilience. Now, for those who don't know about resilience, it reflects the fact that some people are just born with the ability to overcome setbacks with relative ease. And that's what you want to develop in life. Let's go. First, stay flexible. Resilient people expect to face challenges at different points in their lives. They're able to adjust their goals and find ways to adapt. Second, learn some lessons. When you have a negative experience, focus on the positive lessons you can learn from it. Third, take action. Think about what you can do to improve your situation and then actually do it. Mm -hmm. Fourth, and really important, stay connected. Nurture your relationships with friends and family. When you're going through you know, a hard time, don't withdraw from other people. Get connected with them and share what you're experiencing. Fifth, release tension. Make sure you have outlets to really express your emotions and let go. You know, write in a journal, draw, meditate, you know, talk to a friend or a counselor. Six, have a sense of purpose. Do things that bring meaning to your life. That may be spending time with your family, volunteering, or, or working for some cause that you really believe in. Seventh, develop some healthy habits. Exercise regularly, eat a balanced diet, get some time to rest. Eighth, and this is really, really key, and I, I express to, to a lot of students who are going through really difficult times right now. The mm -hmm. weather's been crappy. You're about the middle of the semester. You're trying to figure out, you know, you got your first exam back. You got a bunch of C's, mm -hmm. you know, where you're used to doing A's and everything, and right. that could really get you down. Believe in yourself. Take pride in your abilities and what you've done. Recognize that you have personal strengths, despite what's going on in your life at this moment. Ninth, keep laughing. Hold on to a sense of humor, even when times are tough. And finally, be optimistic. A positive, hopeful outlook will make you much more resilient 
it makes a big difference in your life and it can create a difference for all the people that are around you. Mm-hmm. And just on my end, I mean, I have a couple of tips as well. Number one for me is just to exercise, you know, get the blood flowing. If you need to get up, you know, extra 30 minutes or an hour before you usually do, go right ahead, you know, do some push ups, do some sit ups, do some jumping jacks just to get your energy going, you know, get your self esteem going. That way you can get the morning off on the right foot and just try to work out at least two or three times a week. Um, I know that's two what, or three. I mean, that's I'm just I'm setting them set three up. or four, three or four for me. Okay, two or three for somebody who doesn't really get out there like that, you know, because I, I am paying that twenty five dollars a month at Planet Fitness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, you know, I got to get it in. Another thing too is just to sleep and get some rest. You know, a lot of people just want to work themselves to the bone. They wake up groggy and irritated and mad. Get try to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep if you can. So if in order to do that means, like I said, get up early. Get your day going and try to get to bed. Set a set a time to go to bed. I know for me, you know, I'm I work during the day, obviously at UNT Dallas, and then I come home and do work. So my cutoff time is midnight. So I don't usually try to go past one. I've done it in the past so many times in the past, which is why I'm here right now in terms of grinding and working hard. But now I'm at the point where I need to start thinking about other things as well, especially my health, considering I just turned 30. And not saying that's a bad thing, but hey, I'm taking the early steps right now. You know what I mean? And also too, plan your Schedule accordingly. You know what I mean? Like if you need to cut out some TV time, you need to cut out some socialization time with your friends or whatever. Not saying that you have to do that all the time, but in in order to make sure that your daily duties and your work duties are taken care of significantly, you're going to have to do that, have to sacrifice some other things in your life. And like I said, man, you have to make time for fun. Like Rick said, I'm sorry. Make time for fun. Have some humor in your life. Go to the movies. You know, go out and have a drink with your friends or do whatever you want to. You know, just hit the hit the town. You know, everything's good. Just make sure that you find that balance for your life going forward. Those are all great tips. And one thing I'll just emphasize, if you're going through something and it's been a while and you're not able to cope with it, go get some help. There's help on campus. There's help in the community. There's help at your church. Absolutely. Or your synagogue or wherever it is you worship. There's help there for you. Don't let it get you down and don't let it keep you down. Absolutely. And like Greg said, you know, just, you know, and don't be afraid to, you know, ask for help. You know what I mean? If you're struggling with a particular area in your life, you know, talk to somebody. You know, closed mouths don't get fed. Ain't that right, Greg? That's true. You know what I mean? So, Greg, what else you got going the rest of this week before we get out of here? Well, I got a little bit of travel coming up Mm -hmm. and looking forward to that and working on some big, big projects that I hope to be able to share with some of our listeners in the next few weeks. Life is good. Well, Greg, I'm going to check out some college football this weekend, man. And obviously the biggest game of the weekend is Alabama going against the LSU Tigers in Baton Rouge. Big weekend, man. Big big game, big game. So Alabama is traveling down to Louisiana to take on the Tigers. Right in Death Valley, man. It's going to be a great game. So in your heart of heart, Mm -hmm. who wins that game? Alabama. That was a sigh, ladies and gentlemen. Alabama, I mean, let's hear what he's got to say. Alabama, man. Uh, LSU is definitely going to play mad and angry. Um, but missing arguably the top linebacker in the country in Devin White for the first half for the first half is going to going going to be huge for him. Um, but I think Alabama just has a little bit more talent. Not necessarily talent, but I think they can execute a little bit better on offense considering the quarterback and other explosive weapons that Tua has to get the job done. So, But we'll see what happens, though. Well, you know, I, I think the way Alabama's been playing, they could probably suit off and suit up and, and give the Cowboys a, a run for their money. Yeah, man. Well, you know, the Cowboys just traded for Amari Cooper, you know, in exchange for a first round pick out to Oakland. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But um, they're actually at home this week, a Monday night game against the Tennessee Titans. A very winnable game, and they're actually 4-0 and at home. So most likely they'll probably win that game and probably lose the next game on the road. So we'll see what happens with that. Oh, we, we hope so. And I understand that Jerry made some changes in the coaching staff. Yes, they fired their offensive line coach, who they just brought in earlier this year uh, when they pretty much subbed out the entire coaching staff. So obviously that was a mistake to bring in that guy. And they brought uh, Hudson, I forgot what his name is. Hudson Hawk? Yes, Hudson Hawk back out of retirement. And they upgraded Mark Colombo, the former right tackle for the Dallas Cowboys, to the offensive line coach. So we'll see if that does anything. But hey, but I'm pretty sure they would like to have Travis Frederick come back. Well, I hope that offensive line can give Dak a little bit more protection because I know he's got to be a little tired of spending that much time looking at the dirt. And also opening up some holes for Mr. Ezekiel Elliott. Now, hopefully with the addition of Amari Cooper, that will kind of open up, loosen up some things on the on the passing game and give Zeke a little bit more uh, room to run. But it all starts with the trigger man, and I don't have that much confidence in Dak right now, but that's just my opinion. 
Well, I didn't know you were a Dak hater. So I'm not. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just going based off what I see, man. Just going based off what I see. That's all I'm saying. I'm sorry to disappoint you on that one, Greg. My well, bad. You know, Cowboys. I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm just trying to be real with everybody here, man. I understand. You know, he's just <laughs> mad because LSU is going to get the mm, beat out of. I ain't this mad. Weekend. You know, I ain't mad. You know. I just want to see what happens. I know it's going to be a good game, definitely a defensive struggle. So, um, you know, I'm just excited to see what's going to happen Saturday night in Death Valley, which is arguably probably the best college football experience in the entire world. Well, in the entire country, I should say. And how about the NBA? NBA. Mavs are kind of teetering on 500, but it's still early. Dirk should be coming back here soon. Um, But we'll see what happens with them. And LeBron and Lakers are struggling a little bit. Houston is really struggling. Houston is struggling, and it's been surprising. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they're trying to figure out uh, how to get their cohesiveness together. But, you know, missing CP3 is probably a reason why. Not the reason why, but a huge reason why that's happening, considering that fight they had out in L.A., which is pretty funny. If you, you know, we didn't me. talk about the fight, but we'll have to pick that up at another time because <laughs> yes, that's going to be a little bit of a discussion. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Well, that'll do it for this week's show. For Benjamin Bullock and Greg Campbell, thank you for listening to the Urban Advantage Podcast the official voice of Southern Dallas and the University of North Texas at Dallas. And remember, everyone, blaze your trail. Thank you for listening to the Urban Advantage podcast, the official voice of the University of North Texas at Dallas. To learn more about the university, head to untdallas.edu. And remember, blaze your trail.